Hello everybody, how's it going today? So it's now January the 27th. It's about 12 p.m. Central Standard Time here in Manitoba, Canada. Got the music going properly to have a very conducive ambiance to set the environment properly so I can focus and relax myself while I do technical analysis for you folks. So hope you've all been extremely cautious because there are many, many things that I foresee and that I'm anticipating that's drawing me back into the market to want to trade very heavily again. And for those that are still interested in my course, you've got only five days. The course is about 60% done now filming. It's gonna be re-updated, revised. And if you don't have it, I highly recommend that you get it because if you don't have it, you will never be able to have access to it again unless you wanna pay a premium price for it. And that's just the way it is. So let's get on with this technical analysis. Okay, I don't need to market myself. All the awards that I've won this year already have marketed myself for me already. <laughs> so guys, what's my opinion, okay? Bullish. My opinion is bullish right now. And the main reason why I say that this is a bullish month is simply because of this factor right here. One main reason that's contributing towards it. This hammer candle right here in December set the way to bounce off of the 21 exponential moving average. And we also see a huge candle here, which I would personally call a bullish pin bar, okay? You usually see bullish pin bars as a sign of reversal from the bottom as we're moving up. So when you're dipping extremely low, right, we're gonna see some bullish momentum with a bullish pin bar. Got the fire going very nicely today as well, guys. A real fire. Picked up a lot of wood, about one quart of wood. So that's gonna keep me warm and very toasty with a nice fireplace, setting the mood properly. And that's how you guys know that I'm gonna get serious about training again. It's all about the firewood, right? So we take a look at the monthly right now, and the monthly is very contradictory, okay? So this is the setup that I always look for when it comes to a bearish period and a bearish trend that could possibly be here. So my majority of times, this is what I look for, okay? I am looking for this type of momentum with the red, okay? So first of all, the red slow moving average. Keep in mind for the MACD, it's defaulted to 26 and 12. And now I'm going to choose a slow moving average. You get one crossover, you cross back like that, and the second crossover is usually the one where it's going to tank. That's exactly what we're seeing right here. We saw at the beginning of December, that there is very, very bearish pressure coming to the downside. And remember this, okay? Remember this right here, that if we go on the weekly for three consecutive years now, three consecutive years, remember that, all right? On December the 17th is the day that the bullish market ended in December 2017. And then December the 17th again is where the bullish month began right here see my mouse look right below it in 2018 and then in 2019 right here i'm on the weekly so you're gonna see december 16 but it started on december the 17th it's been a very significant day in history for bitcoin for three years running and the question is will we have this type of bullish momentum for the year to come because if we do Hallelujah, 50K is probably what we're gonna see, maybe even higher than that, but only time will tell, all right? If we look on the weekly right here, what we're seeing on the weekly is a crossover to the upside. That's a fairly decent crossover, and there are two specific types of shapes that I always talk about. There's a concave shape, think of it like a cave, and then there's a convexed shape, like that. And the convex shape over here is where we get a function that could be very, very parabolic of e to the x. And these parabolic type of functions are just phenomenal to see. And that's what we were seeing here for a little bit of time. And just as a quick reminder, everybody, since a lot of people are still asking about this, you guys have literally five days to pick up this course. It's gonna be re-edited, revamped, revised in every single way, restructured as well. 60% done filming it, 
Here's the curriculum for the first course. You're welcome to pause it. Here's the curriculum for the second course. This is the old material, just so you know. Anybody who has this before I am done filming the entire course will get access to the new course 1 and 2 for free. If you don't have it, I'm only going to have 100 people that I'm going to allow to purchase it in the future, but for a much higher price. And you don't want to be one of those people that purchases a much higher price, so pick it up while you can. It's simple. If you guys have access to courses 1, 2, and 3 before the new material comes out, you're going to get the updated course for free. And it goes for 190 American. So you guys are welcome to pause it once again for the curriculum. Just wanted to show you it very quickly. So back to this guys, okay? So this here is the exponential function that I call y is equal to e to the x. y is equal to e to the x, okay? This is a parabolic function that could go up to the upside, okay? Where it eventually reaches an asymptote, which is basically you can say a line that it never reaches, the simplest way I can define it for you guys, okay? So right here is the best shape that we can possibly see and want, but there's something that's always going to be foreshadowing, right? And looming over our heads. Are we going to get a very, very small structure that goes to the upside and it simply just curves right back down? But right now, as we see, every time the weekly moves to the upside, we don't always get a massive trend of going to the upside, okay? Let me give you an example. That's going to be cookie cutter for you folks to understand. So since February the 6th, we had this massive downtrend as you can see right there, right? February 6th, we, I always remember these very significant days. And then you see the weekly as well. As we reach this type of descending type of triangle, where we eventually ended up breaking to the downside. And once that happened, we see right here, that the histogram surely did peak to the upside, right? Right now, the MACD, which is the red and the blue moving line, the 26 and the 12 EMA, it's still on the negative side, just like that right there. But you see the histogram actually going to the upside. So always exercise caution, in my opinion, okay? I will not be playing this long on a breakout. It is simply too risky for me. And the reason why it's too risky for me is because I want to exercise caution and purchase on a support level by accumulating and perhaps dollar cost averaging on a smaller scale for a swing trading position, okay? Because then I will have confirmed a higher high and a higher low. That's a lot less risk for me because this year, guys, I'm not taking any risk whatsoever. I want to make sure that I understand that without risk, there's no possibility of massive reward. But at the same time, it's one of those years I want to be very cautious because I think that my biggest weakness right now is my aggression in the market, as you guys have seen. If you guys haven't seen my live trading videos, go check it out. $107,000 profit in less than one year with showing losses as well, all live traded. And they were all very aggressive styles of training, right? And I took some big losses too, as you guys remember. I don't want to have those kind of losses under my belt anymore. I'm trying to exercise a little bit more caution in the market. My girlfriend, she's um, enjoying... I'm not sure which fireplace she's enjoying right now. Is she enjoying the real one? Or is she enjoying the fake one? Which one are you enjoying, Vic? This is the real one. <laughs> do, you mind going blow, do you mind blowing on yeah. it to get it going a little bit? I don't want to yeah. interrupt the camera. She's always amazing to me. Always cleaning up my place. Cooking for me. Getting the fires going. Let's see if she's actually capable of getting that fire going, guys. Let's see. <laughs> I'll take her off camera, guys. She's kind of camera shy. Okay, anyways. So on the weekly right now, we trended right here for 7 weeks, if you remember. Okay, for 49 days. Below the 55 EMA. And now, we got this massive chance to actually spiral out of here. Did this actually break above it already? Did this break above it guys? You guys tell me and the answer to me is no, we didn't because we assume parallelity and once we assume parallelity, if I just do it like that, okay? Actually, you know what's a better way to do it? Instead of drawing two lines, I'm gonna do this right here. Where is it here? How do I not be able to find this? There we go. Parallel channel. If I do something like that, okay? That's beautifully shown, isn't it? Right here. 
And then now, this one just degrades the very, very top, in my opinion, okay? It's very tight. Got this median right down the middle. Then we go to daily, and now you can actually see it much more crystal clear with many, many bear trapped regions at the top. And that's what's important to me, acknowledging these, or oh, sorry, bull trapped region. Okay, now we're gonna take a look at the long versus the short table, okay? Let's go to, B. if you guys are not familiar with how to do that, I'll show you right after we check CMC, coin market cap. So Bitcoin right now, its dominance is 65.6%. It's always been hovering between 65 and 67% thus far. You see coins like BSV. It's actually got a huge gain right now, 13%, a double digit. EOS, of course. Ethereum Classic. Alts are skyrocketing right now. Look how parabolic Ethereum Classic is right here. Isn't that beautiful? Look at EOS. So now we're going to ask ourselves, are these going to be one of the coins or is Bitcoin going to be one of the coin that's going to parabolically move up as well? BSV is just phenomenal right now. So is it altcoin season? We'll see. But some coins are hitting double digit, okay? Bitcoin volume needs to trend back over $40 billion and we don't see that quite yet. So the market must be incredibly worried about its volume that's continuing to slowly increase but not steady enough at a fast pace, in my personal opinion. We see big rallies like on January 15, right? $40 billion, $44 billion, 31, 36, 32, 34. And then we just start to dwindle all the way back down to the 20s. So the change is actually very averaging right now and we are right in the median. So not much has happened with the volume as well. So now let's take a look at the BTC USD long table on Bitfinex to see. Do you see the longs right here just dropping? Okay. You guys see this on the daily, right? You guys see this since December pretty much of it dropping. Okay. Let's actually go to the four hour to get a little bit more of a base. Okay. You see since January the 4th. People have been just destroying the long table for over 23 days now with 20, what, with about 30, excuse me, 30,000 Bitcoin right now. That's only long on this particular exchange. You go to the short table, I bet you super high. It's trying to break it right now. So let me, let me explain to you what a squeeze is, okay? A squeeze is a concept where there's a battle between the bulls and the bears. One is always pushing the market up. One is always pushing the market down. One is accumulating, of course. So what the bulls, what, what the bears are doing right now is they are accumulating their short positions on the way up, right? So they got many ways to add to their short position, right? They can set a limit order that that on, on the buy side, or sorry, on the sell side, right? They set a limit order on the sell side. So if you buy to go long, you are actually buying their short, right? So in turn, both go up at the same time as well. Or you can market execute a sell. So if you market execute a sell, then that only adds basically to the short table from my understanding. So what we're seeing is the short table exponentially rising right now, especially since January the 13th. We're seeing a rise of about 105%. So if I were a bull with a billion or two billion or 20 billion dollars, I would be thinking to myself this, well, bears and shorters need to close their position by buying because they're now in a short position when they've sold since they're betting against the market. Make sense, right? So they're betting against the market in order for them to close their position they need to buy. So if I was a bull that wanted the market to go up and that's where I made my profit rather than short selling and buying at a, uh, at a lower price. Then if I were a bull with a lot of money and I was a whale, what I would want to do is basically liquidate these bears. Because when you liquidate these bears, right, after the accumulation phase and then you got the excess phase that makes the market spike up. So if the bulls end up shooting up the market, they just start buying, 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 buying. Well, you got a limit order. That's going to be your stop, right? As a short seller or as a bear. So then you're going to be smart enough unless you're an amateur and you're gonna, you know, ride that thing until you get liquidated, margin calls right coming up, right? Don't do that, guys, I'm just kidding. So then what ends up happening is you're, you're stopped out. You hit your R, 
limit whatever you your R allocation is for your risk, right? And then after that, you have to sell, or so you have to buy as a bear. Okay, so we're looking at the short table. So then if the market ends up spiking because there is an, a phenomenal amount of shorts that are accumulating right now, okay, then what that could possibly mean is that the bulls are going to liquidate the bears, forcing them to buy, which actually adds fuel to the fire. So now, not only do you have the bulls that want to shoot up the market, but you also got the bears that are forced to liquidate that all of a sudden bears turn to bull. So now you're getting both teams that are batting the same way, that are going to cross this, that are shooting in the same net, that's shooting in the same basket, that's going to the same way in the field, trying to shoot in the same goal. That makes sense, right? So we got to always be careful of the short versus the long table as well. So now let's get into a Bitcoin technical analysis. Do you know why? Because I want to start making some chicken pot pie. Because it's pretty hungry. Getting hungry, babe? Yeah. <laughs> She's putting on her makeup right now. Getting ready to look pretty for the day. She's just going to smell like fire. She can't even get the fire going. I got to go get the fire going, guys. I'll be right back, okay? All right, guys. You see that? That's how men make fires. I got the fire going really well. Hey, Victoria, you did a pretty good job. You know that? Yeah, thanks. It's the effort that counts, okay? <laughs> so look on the four-hour chart right here, guys. We're like getting a doji right here. Every time we're getting a reversal candle, the bulls end up pushing it up extremely high. So what I want to forewarn everybody is this point right here, okay? I need you guys to be very, very aware of this particular point right here because that is a resistance. Now, I've been debating with a lot of... <clears throat> I've been debating with a lot of my friends about this specific point and how to draw this properly and i think that we are in agreement right now that this is one of the best ways to do it because when you do in the weekly it just seems to make sense now doesn't it you're getting a combination of both wicks and bodies in there as well so this is going to be a very decisive point right now the volume needs to exponentially go up in my personal opinion if the volume doesn't go up we're not going to get a break through it not only that you guys gotta also factor in this right here as well okay so I'm bullish keep in mind but I'm only gonna be bullish until we reach this point which is another hundred dollars up until then I need a clear decisive break above it this volume needs to pick up exponentially okay so now let's take a look at Elliot if I do Elliot wave analysis and first of all I take my trend based Fibonacci extension what we see right here is that this hit a direct one-to-one -one hit. Bam! That confirmed that wave three was smaller or was longer than wave one, okay? And then now, if I do this as well, okay? Right there. That is beautiful, right? Five clean waves that goes to the upside if I go on a smaller time frame and I can break this down with ease, folks. Okay? But it's this one right here. That's the most important in my personal opinion, okay? And then you get five just sexy, the waves that ended up going up here. Let me break this down to you even further on a two-hour time frame right here. This is the ABC for wave three to four, okay? Right there, that's the ABC coming down. That's gorgeous in my opinion. Or it could have started from right there where we get the A to the B to the C. But this is right here what gives it away as a fifth wave. One, two, three, four, and bam, a final push to the upside. So I really do believe, guys, that this is Z. When I say Z, I'm talking about this right here. Because I can't count this in threes. It's very difficult for me to count this in threes coming to the downside. So I've got no choice but to deduce for now that that's W, that's X, that's Y. That's X again, and this is most like, excuse me, most likely Z. Where this somehow was one, two, three, four, five, perhaps an ABC in there, and that could have made one more. And I, you know what? I'm gonna spend a lot of time in my next video doing this for you guys to see it. But for now, we're left with this deduction, are we not? Okay? And if we are left with this deduction right here, then another deduction that we must make based on this five impulsive waves going up is that we are very, very bullish if this were the actual case. Okay? 
if this were the actual case, then we are incredibly bullish because we barely even graze a 3A2, if even, okay? So are we that bullish to the point where we think that this is a waves 1, 2, 3, 4, and a 5 It's going to the upside? Or is this wave 1, and that's 2, and that's 3, and that's 4, and there's going to be a huge burst to the upside? So if this is my alternate count, okay? then this right here must be an impulse wave going to the upside, and this here must be an ABC. Remember that deduction is all that... The, the people say Elliott wave doesn't work. Elliott wave doesn't work. But in my opinion, it does work. It's just a matter of learning how to be logical and deduce, right? So if we say right now that this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, then this must be an ABC. But keep in mind that it can still fail, okay? It can literally still fail, and this could easily end up becoming... Do you guys know what just happened? We were, uh, my girl and I, we were cleaning up our fireplace there, and we were removing some of the ashes and the embers from last night where the fire was going, threw in the garbage can, and the garbage can actually started smoking because from 12 hours ago, there were still embers in it that were burning. And then she just comes up to me, she's like, is there a garbage can on fire right now? <laughs> so yeah, um, that's kind of funny. So anyways, so if this is possible, then this could still be a W, okay? You know, that could be a W. That could still be an X right here. And then we can still get a Y all the way down there, which is what I'm hoping for. I want 7,000 something, okay? So keep in mind that even though this is an impulse wave up, we can break many times and we can fail many times before it actually goes to the upside. Hey, babe, I was just telling uh, the, my viewers about you catching that smoking on fire. Yeah. That was pretty close, right? Yeah, that was great. Yeah, it was pretty close. It could have been really bad because um, if I left it there and we weren't home or something, the garbage can could have caught on fire entirely. Yeah, so anyways, so I'm going to give you guys my prediction, okay? I'm going to give you both my bearish and my bullish prediction. So um, there's there's really not a lot, of, a lot of things to say right now except for this, okay? If I right now go to the two-hour chart, okay? The two hour chart right here, if you look at this particular point, okay, you need to focus on what I'm saying right now. It's important. This particular point, okay, comparing this particular point right here, I want it to be green actually. So focus on this. I'm going to teach you guys more about bearish divergence. That particular point right there, and this particular point right here, okay. See these four points that I have? This one right there is clearly a higher high than this one right there. But the opposite implies for RSI. Usually if you get a higher high for RSI, but a lower high for price, then that implies something called hidden bearish divergence, which is a way to search for continuation on the downside, right? Going to the downside. So once again, we are comparing the two peaks right there, these right two right there, versus these two right here, okay? Now, if we compare these two right here, we're saying that this one here has a lower high, but the indicator has a higher high, which means this is implying a continuation to the downside. And that's what we call hidden bearish divergence, okay? So now, we've got to be extremely careful about this particular point right here. So if we don't break out of here with a lot of conviction, then I don't think we're going to break to the upside. My personal resistance is going to be right around here how I drew it, around another $100 up, 8850 On top of that, if we break above there, obviously this is going to be the interim swing high that I see here at $9,170. But if we get that kind of volume that I've been searching for, then this is going to be my play for the day for a long position. I'll probably enter it at 8,900. Give me that volume. That's all I'm asking for, okay? 89. I'm going to probably set my stop for a really tight stop at 1%, okay? And I'm going to go for the high here for a 3% gain. And that's going to be a really good swing trading position for a $10,000 position, right? Easy $300, 3% possible gain. 
1% possible loss, okay? So we must break 8,900 with a lot of conviction and volume for me to be bullish. And then once we break this, probably gonna hit it one time, not gonna break it. But if we do get that kind of volume, 10K is where we're gonna go. So we're at a very pivotal point right now. So watch this as well, okay? I don't know if you folks have noticed this as well, but we are actually seeing a channel as well in here, okay? Look, are you seeing this channel? Right? Okay? So now if this is possible, watch this right now. Watch this trend-based Fibonacci extension that I'm just about to draw for you. Do you see this third wave? Pretty much made an exact one-to-one. -one. Almost, okay? Almost one-to-one, -one, and that's significant because the fifth wave could be slightly smaller. Therefore, dun dun dun, dun okay? If we are just measuring, simple, super, super simple, right? This could easily end up hitting another peak over here, right near the $10,000 mark, okay? So now, what I could possibly say is that this could be one, that could be two, and here's a $10,000 target, and bam, we come right back to here, bounce above that support that was previously a resistance, and then bam, we shoot past the 10K to finish the final fifth wave. Wouldn't that be a sight? And then now, this is also an alternate count. Okay? Something like that. Is that possible? Yes, it surely is, okay? So gotta keep this in mind right here. 8,900 is my key number for it to break. Once it breaks there, I will go into a very small position. And keep in mind, your money, your loss, your risk, your choice, your wins, your accountability, right? So then if we see that, that would be a phenomenal gain, okay? And let's see if this would actually be shorter if it hits 10K. It would actually be longer. So I don't know if 10K is going to be a number there that could possibly hit maybe less than 10K because then wave three will have been the shortest wave. Right? Because if we take, here's an easy way to measure other than Fibonacci extension. Let me show you guys it. It's just simply drawing boxes. Okay? Let's say I drew a square that's this big for this particular run. Okay? Right there. If I drew another square just like that, right? Is it higher or lower? We see that wave one is actually bigger than wave three, just based on the vertical height of it, which is easy to imply that it's not one to one, it's less than one to one. Therefore, wave 5 needs to hit slightly less than 97.85. But nevertheless, still possible, okay? Now, if we are bearish, okay? If we are bearish, we're gonna reject so hard at $8,900. And we're simply gonna retest $8,200 because we're gonna get this massive rejection. We take a look at all of these candles right now that we see. We already got this kind of, think of a hammer, but upside down, right? We're also seeing this hidden bearish pressure coming to the downside. So right now is a very pivotal time to see what's going on. But we do look on moving averages, barely touched the 200 moving average on the daily. In fact, we ended up bouncing above the two, actually, is it the three hour? Yeah, above the, above the 300 moving average, just hovering above it. Didn't even touch the four hour one whatsoever. So guys, today, I don't think anything is going to happen for this particular day's candle. I think after seven hours, when the daily closes. Guys, I just got a message on my Twitter right now that my account has been locked for 11 hours and 48 minutes. That's really weird. So I guess you guys can't get a hold of me for 11 hours and 48 minutes. Sorry about that, guys. Alrighty. So yeah, those are my thoughts for the day. I'll leave you guys with that. And once again, if you guys are still interested in my course, I assure you that there's only going to be a limited amount of slots available for the new one coming up. If you guys are curious, that's my Ethereum address. Just send the 190 there and message me on Twitter. And you guys are going to get access to download all courses 1, 2, and 3. And after that, when the new one comes out, you'll get access to the brand new course for free. But if you don't have it before my new course comes, my new courses rather, the updated ones come out, you might be paying a pretty penny for it because I'm starting to respect myself a lot more and I'm starting to see all the garbage that's actually out there compared to my material. So anyways, I hope to see a lot of you guys be interested in the course. Have yourselves a great day. Thank you very much for always giving me the support, love and respect.
to watch my videos, and I'll make sure I see you guys much more in the future. Have a great day. It's time to cook lunch with my wifey. Bye now. Take it easy.